All right, here we are with lesson 11, the decimal expansion of some irrational numbers. So the opening exercise, it says to place the square root of 28 on a number line. What decimal do you think the square root of 28 is equal to? Explain your reasoning and we will revisit your prediction later in this lesson. All right, for this lesson, you're definitely gonna need your calculator, so have it available. All right, let's start our discussion in your math journal. Again, synthesizing what we're talking about, write down anything that you feel is important and that you might need to remember for later. So we have studied the properties of rational numbers. Today, we will finally be able to characterize those numbers that are not rational. So far, we've been able to estimate the size of a number like the square root of three by stating that it is between two perfect squares of square root of one and square root of four, meaning that square root of three is between one and two, but closer to two. In our work so far, we have found the decimal expansion of numbers by using long division and by inspecting the denominators for products of twos and fives. Numbers written with a square root symbol are different and require a different method for determining their decimal expansions. The method we will learn is called rational approximation, using a sequence of rational numbers to get closer and closer, closer to a given number to estimate the value of a number. All right, let's take a look at example one. So recall the basic theorem on inequalities. Let C and D be two positive numbers and let N be a fixed positive integer. If C is less than D, if and only if, c to the nth power is less than d to the nth power. So with that, let's write the decimal expansion of the square root of three. The first approximation. So we will use the basic theorem on inequalities that we learned in lesson three. To write the decimal expansion of the square root of three, we first determine between which two integers the number square root of three would lie on the number line. This is our first approximation. What are those integers? Well, a number square root of three will be between one and two on the number line because one squared is one and two squared is four. So with respect to the basic inequality, we can verify that the square root of three lies between the integers one and two because one squared is less than the square root of three squared, which is less than two squared. To be more precise with our estimate of the square root of three, we now look at the tenths place between the numbers one and two. This is our second approximation. And here we have a number line with it partitioned into ten equal parts between one and two. So using this number line, the question now becomes where exactly would the square root of three lie on this magnified version of the number line? There are 10 possibilities. So we have one is less than the square root of three is less than one and one tenth. Or does the square root of three lie between one and one tenth and one and two tenths? Or does the square root of three lie between one and two tenths and one and three tenths and so on until we get to the last one, is the square root of three between one and nine tenths and two. So using the basic inequality can guide us to selecting the correct possibility. Specifically, we need to determine which of the inequalities shown next is correct. So squaring one, one squared, is that less than the square root of three squared? And is that less than one and one tenth squared? The same thing with one and one tenth squared is the square root of three squared between one and one tenth squared and one and two tenths squared. Or is it between one and two tenths squared and one and three tenths squared and so on and so forth until we get to one and nine tenths squared and two tenths or two squared. So with the help of your calculator, we can see that one and seven tenths squared is less than the square root of three squared, which is less than one and eight tenths squared because one and seven tenths squared is two and 89 hundredths. 
and 1 and 8 tenths squared is 3 and 24 hundredths. Therefore, 1 and 7 tenths is less than the square root of 3, and that is less than 1 and 8 tenths. So what do you think will need to be done to get an even more precise estimate of the number square root of 3? Well, we will need to look at the interval between 1 and 7 tenths and 1 and 8 tenths more closely and repeat the process we did before. So looking at the increments between 1 and 7 tenths and 1 and 8 tenths, we again have 10 possibilities. This is our third approximation. So using our number line, we've magnified in between 1 and 7 tenths and 1 and 8 tenths, and we have the partitions listed below. So using the basic theorem of, on inequalities and the help of a calculator again, show that the square root of 3 will be between 1 and 73 hundredths and 1 and 74 hundredths because the square root of 3 squared is greater than 1 and 73 hundredths squared but less than 1 and 74 hundredths squared. So verify that using the calculator, 1 and 73 hundredths squared is 2 and 9,929 ten thousandths and 1 and 74 hundredths squared is 3 and 276 ten thousandths and that ultimately leads to 1 and 73 hundredths squared is less than the square root of 3 squared which is less than 1 and 74 hundredths squared. So what do you think we'll need to be done to get an even more precise estimate of the number square root of 3? Well now we will need to look at the interval between 1 and 73 hundredths and 1 and 74 hundredths more closely and repeat the process we did before. So at this point the pattern should be clear. Now let's look more carefully at what we're actually doing. So we began by looking at the sequence of integers, specifically between two positive integers 1 and 2. Think of this interval as 10 to the 0 power because it equals 1. Then we looked at the sequence of tenths between 1 and 2. Think of this interval as 10 to the negative first power because it is equal to 1 tenth. Then we looked at the sequence of hundredths between 1 and 7 tenths and 1 and 8 tenths. Think of this as in the interval as 10 to the negative second power because this would be equal to 1 over 100. So to determine the location of square root of 3, we had to look for points that differ by 10 to the negative nth power for any positive integer n. The intervals we investigated, such as 10 to the negative nth power, get increasingly smaller as n gets larger. This method of looking at su successive intervals is what we call rational approximation. With each new interval we are approximating the value of the number by determining which two rational numbers it lies between. Alright, example two. This revisits the question from the opening exercise. We will use the method of rational approximation to estimate the location of the square root of 28 on the number line. So what interval of integers, for example an interval equal to 10 to the 0 power, do we examine first and explain? Well, you must examine the interval between 5 and 6 because 5 squared is less than <coughs> the square root of 28 squared, but that is less than 6 squared. In other words, 25 is less than 28 and 28 is less than 36. So now we examine the interval of tenths, in other words, 10 to the negative first power between 5 and 6. Where might the square root of 28 lie? So here is our second approximation and here is the number line. So the number square root of 28 will lie between 5.0 and 5.1 or 5.1 and 5.2 or so on and so forth until we get to 5.9 and 6.0. So how do we determine which interval is correct? Well, we must use the basic inequality to check each interval. For example, we need to see if the following inequality is 2. 5 squared is less than the square root of 28, which should be less than 5.1 squared. 
Before we begin checking each interval, let's think about how we can be more methodical in our approach. We know that the square root of 28 is between 5 and 6, but which integer is it closer to? Well, the number square root of 28 will be closer to 5 than 6. So then we should begin checking the intervals beginning with 5 and work our way up. If the number were closer to 6, then we would begin che checking the intervals on the right first and working our way down. So to determine which interval the number square root of 28 will lie between. Now that we know that the number square root of 28 lies between 5 and 2 tenths and 5 and 3 tenths, let's check the intervals of hundredths, that is 10 to the negative second power. So here is our number line for our third approximation. Again, we should try to be methodical. Since 5 and 2 tenths squared is 27 and 4 hundredths, and 5 and 3 tenths squared is 28 and 9 hundredths, where should we begin checking? We should begin checking with the interval between 5 and 29 hundredths and 5 and 30 hundredths because 28 is closer to 28 and 9 hundredths compared to 27 and 4 hundredths. Determine which interval the number square root of 28 will lie between. Now that we know that the number square root of 28 is between 5 and 29 hundredths and 5 and 30 hundredths, let's go one step further and examine the interval of thousandths, that is 10 to the negative third power. So here is our number line again magnified once again, and we have 10 more partitions. So since 5 and 29 hundredths squared is 27.9841, and 5 and 3 hundredths, or 30 hundredths squared is 28 and 9 tenths, or 9 hundredths, where should we begin our search? Well, we should begin with the interval between 5.290 and 5.291 because 28 is closer to 27.9841 compared to 28.09. So determine the interval that the number square root of 28 will lie between. Well, the square root of 28 lies between 5.291 and 5.292 because 5.291 squared is 27.994681 and 5.292 squared is 28.005264. At this point, we have a fair approximation of the value of the square root of 28. It is between 5.291 and 5.292 on the number line. So we would indicate it as right here. So we can continue this process of rational approximation to see that the square root of 28 is 5.291502622 5 and so on. How is this number different from other infinite decimals we have worked with? Well, other infinite decimals we have worked with have a block of digits that repeat at some point. This infinite decimal does not seem to do that. We know that rational numbers are those that have a decimal expansion that eventually repeat. We also know that a rational number can be expressed as a fraction in the form of a ratio of integers. In the last lesson, we learned how to convert a repeating decimal to a fraction. Do you think that same process can be used with a number like the square root of 28 equaling 5.291502622 and so on? Well, no, because the decimal expansion does not seem to repeat. So because the number square root of 28 cannot be expressed as a rational number, we say that it is irrational. Any number that cannot be expressed as a rational number is, by definition, an irrational number. So a common irrational number is pi. Pi is equal to 3.14159265 and so on. Notice that the decimal expansion of pi is infinite and does not repeat. So those qualities are what make pi an ir irrational number. Often for computations, we give pi a rational approximation of 3.14 or 22 sevenths, 
Those are merely approximations, not the true value of the number pi. Another example of an irrational number is the square root of 7. What do you expect the decimal expansion of the square root of 7 to look like? Well, the decimal expansion of the square root of 7 will be infinite without a repeating block. So the number square root of 7 is equal to 2.645751311 and so on. The decimal expansion is infinite and does not repeat. Is the number square root of 49 rational or irrational? Explain. Well, the number square root of 49 is equal to 7. The decimal expansion of square root of 49 can be written as 7.0 repeating which is an infinite decimal expansion with a repeat block. Therefore, square root of 49 is a rational number. So classify the following numbers as rational or irrational. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. You might want to do this pausing the video and then continuing when you are done. Okay, you should be done classifying the following numbers as either rational or irrational. This is what you should have, sort of. So you should identify square root of 10 as irrational because it has a decimal expansion that can only be approximated by rational numbers. The number is, or the numbers 0 0.1231231123 and so on is a repeating decimal that can be expressed as a fraction and is therefore rational. The number square root of 64 is equal to 8 and is therefore a rational number. The fraction 5 elevenths by definition is a rational number because it is the ratio of integers. All right, exercise one. Go ahead and complete that. Your answer should be in the form of a short paragraph explaining your work and process. Continue the video to check your answer. All right, you should be done with ex exercise one. Go ahead and compare your work to the explanation given. If you have any questions, make a note and bring it to class. Alright, let's wrap this up. So we know that any number that cannot be expressed as a rational number is an irrational number. We know that to determine the approximate value of an irrational number, we must determine which two rational numbers it would lie. We know that the method of rational approximation uses a sequence of rational numbers in increments of 10 to the 0, 10 to the negative first, 10 to the negative second, and so on to get closer and closer to the given number. We have a method for determining the approximate decimal expansion of a square root of an imperfect square, which is an irrational number. All right, we'll see you in class.